This is question 12. Here we're told there are nine counters in a box. We're told that four of the counters are red, two are blue, and three are yellow. Then we're told that Pavinda takes at random two counters from the box. We're asked to work out the probability that he takes at least one yellow counter. So I'm just going to concentrate first of all on this sentence here. Pavinda takes at random two counters from the box. So what I can think of this as being, now this would be exactly the same scenario as if Pavinda took a counter from the box and then, without putting it back, chose another one. So choosing a counter and not replacing it, then choosing another counter, would be exactly the same as just picking up two counters at the same time. So what this means is that there are two events. And when we have two events in probability, a nice way to think about this is by drawing a tree diagram. So that is what we're going to start by doing. We're going to draw ourselves a tree diagram. So because there are three events that could potentially happen, my tree diagram is going to need three branches. So what are the three things that could potentially happen? Pavinda, on his first selection, could choose a red, a blue, or a yellow. And the probability that he chooses a red would be four ninths. The probability of choosing a yellow, uh, sorry, a probability of choosing a blue would be two ninths. And the probability of choosing a yellow is three ninths. So that's his first selection. Now, what could then happen next? I'm just going to move this down so we've got a little more space. Well, what could happen next is that the exact same thing happens. On his second pick, there are going to be red, blue and yellow counters in the box. So if he were to choose a red counter first, on his second pick, he could get a red counter a blue counter or a yellow counter. The same is true for blue. There could be three things that could potentially happen. He could choose a red, a blue or a yellow. And the same could happen if he chose a yellow first. He could get a red, blue or a yellow. So red, blue or yellow if he chooses a blue first. Or if he chooses a yellow first, again, he could then, on his second pick, choose a red, blue or a yellow. Now, what we need to concentrate on now is what the probabilities will be on these second picks. Now, if you think about this, if he selects a red counter first and he doesn't replace it, that means that there is going to be one fewer red counters in the box. So there were four originally. He's already chosen one and he hasn't put it back, which means that there are now three red counters out of a total of eight counters. Uh, so eight counters in total. So he's, there are only three left out of the eight that are there because he's already chosen a red on his first pick. That means that if he's chosen a red on his first pick, that means that blue will stay as it is. That will be two, but there are only eight left. And a yellow, that is going to stay as it is. So three eighths. Now, following this all the way through, if he chooses a blue first, well, there are still four reds in there. So that would be four out of eight. The blue, well, he's chosen a blue. In this scenario, he chose a blue first, which means that there is one fewer counter in there so it's going to be one out of eight and then a yellow would be three out of eight for this last set we've got four eighths because he's chosen a yellow first uh, so that means there's still four red counters out of eight blue that will stay as it is so that will be two but there are only eight left in there and then yellows well he's chosen a yellow first in this scenario which means that there's going to be one less. So we've got two 
eighths. So we've drawn our tree diagram. It's a little messy, but we've drawn our tree diagram and we've written out our probabilities. What we're asked to do is we're asked to work out the probability that he takes at least one yellow counter. So at least. So what we then need to do is we need to pinpoint what scenarios is he choosing at least one yellow. So what we can see is that if he chooses a red first and then chooses a yellow, that's one possible case. Red then yellow. Or we could say a blue then yellow that combination there, or we could choose a yellow and then a blue, so a yellow first and then a blue, and it says here that he uh, was probably choose at least one yellow counter, so we could also have a yellow and a yellow, both of them could be yellow. So we've got four combinations which result in at least one yellow counter being selected. All that we now need to do is work out those probabilities. So a red and then a yellow would be four ninths. And then to work this out, all I have to do is multiply those fractions. So a red is four ninths. A yellow would be three eighths. So I'm going to multiply it four ninths by three eighths. Then blue, then yellow. That's two ninths times three eighths. Yellow, then blue. That's three ninths multiplied by two eighths. Oh, and I've forgotten one, haven't I? I've also forgotten yellow and red. So there are actually five combinations. So yellow and red, that's going to be three ninths multiplied by four eighths. And then a yellow and a yellow is going to be three ninths multiplied by two eighths. So yeah, sorry, I, I missed one off there. Yellow and red as well. So yellow and red, yellow and blue, yellow and yellow. So five combinations that would result in choosing one yellow. We've, wrote, we've written out the workings here. So let's just work these out then. So I've got 12 over 72 would be the probability. So four times three and nine times eight. So 12 over 72 for red, then a yellow. For blue, then a yellow, that would be 6 over 72. Then yellow, then a red, <clears throat> that would be 12 over 72. Then yellow, then a blue, would be 6 over 72. And yellow and a yellow would also be 6 over 72. So now I've worked out the probability of, a, of each of these scenarios, each of these combinations happening. All that I have to say is, well, it could be any of these. So it could be 12 over 72 or 6 over 72 or, and so on. So what I have to do is I just have to add these fractions together. So I've got 12 over 72 plus 6 over 72 plus 12 over 72 plus 6 over 72 plus 6 over 72. So to work that out, I'm just going to add the numerators, keep the denominators the same. 12 plus 6 is 18, uh, plus 12 is 30, 36, 42. So my final answer here, what is the probability of that he takes at least one yellow counter? It's going to be 42 over 72. Um, and that would be my final answer. So 42 over 72.